In this video, I find out how to use your Pico 4 with virtual desktop, and you'll be surprised if you do follow all the steps. This it, it will be amazing. It it will almost it, it's better than wired. Okay, so first of all, you need to go to virtual desktop, and that's vrdesktop.net. I'll put the link in the description down below. And then download the streaming app. Now, it depends on whether you're using Windows or Apple, and I'm using Windows to show you. Once you've clicked downloads, it will download into your downloads folder, and you either need to click the link in the browser or go to your downloads folder. And then you need to open up the virtual desktop streaming setup.exe. Once you've opened that up, you'll be presented with Welcome to Virtual Desktop Streaming Setup Wizard, and you just need to click Next. And then it'll be ready to install, and you just need to click Install. And then it'll start to install and put the green bar across. Once it's finished the install, it'll say Completing the Virtual Desktop Streaming Setup Wizard, and just click Finish. And by default, the launch virtual desktop streamer will already be ticked. If you don't want to launch it straight away, you can untick that. And then once it's launched, what it will do is will tell you potential problems that you might currently have. So I have the NVIDIA in-game overlay installed. So I've just, I just went to the settings and just unticked it. It explains everything. And also I had this thing called Game First installed, which I don't ever remember installing. So I deleted that. Then once it's installed and it's opened up, you'll have your virtual desktop streamer, you'll have accounts, options, video, and about. Inside accounts, you just need to type in your username for your Pico account, so exactly matching what you've already got. Then inside options, you've got preferred codec. I have that set to automatic. You have audio streaming. I just have that to VR headset only. I also have all the boxes that are ticked by default including the one that starts with windows so as soon as you start your machine up it will start virtual desktop as well inside videos is where you can set your location of where you're going to make all your recordings and then in the about section is where you can double check if you've got any other interfering apps like that pop-up book that we got originally and check in for updates as well then you need to go to the store on your virtual assistant app and actually search and look for virtual desktop and click purchase. Then you want to get your headset and put that on. Switch it on and get it all ready. So once you've bought it in the app, you can go to the library and then you can go to not installed and you'll see the virtual desktop app and you click the little icon there and just wait for it to install. Then once it's installed, you go back to apps or to all and go to virtual desktop and that will then start to launch it. Then you'll get this pop up where it'll say permissions request, allow virtual desktop to access storage and then you just click allow and allow virtual desktop to access microphone. You can either allow or deny it. I don't know what happens if you deny it. And then you'll be presented with this. Now it's found my computer and it's measuring the bandwidth and it's one thing that I want to talk to you first about and it's making sure that your router is connected to your computer via an ethernet cable. I would suggest CAT7 and you need to make sure it's plugged into your computer. Now I always have mine plugged in but I wanted to demonstrate for this purpose how much it can actually affect. And it's crucial it's one of the one of the things you do need to make sure you've got done so when we put the headset back on we'll notice it's it's straight away it's connected to the computer and it'll still say computer not wired and what you need to do is just disconnect and then reconnect and you won't get that error anymore and it should run, be running pretty well However, the next big thing, you need to make sure that you and your headset is in the same room as your router. Now, your computer can be in the same room. I don't have that set up. My router is downstairs. My computer is here, upstairs with me. So, you need to make sure that you're close to your router, not your computer. If you, you know, the same, then doesn't just ignore that bit. Now, going for a Wi-Fi 6 router is going to have an even better experience than the 5G ones. You, ju you just will. It, it'll be a lot quicker. 
And I'll put a link in the description down below to the ones that is suggested on the virtual desktop Discord. Try saying that five times. By users themselves um, who have had the experience probably longer than what I have using it on other systems as well. So what you, once you've got it ready and launched, as you can see, I get, I'm get i currently getting um, about... Well, it depends on you know whereabouts I am near to my router, which is downstairs. I'm getting between 350 to 500, and it's gonna it's gonna affect my experience. Now, if I go down to my router and be in the same room as it, we'll notice that once I've got it all set up, set the boundary obviously because I'm in a different room. We'll notice that it's 866. Which I was told by someone on the virtual desktop Discord that it was 866 was the, the, the number to, to look for. <laughs> now, if you get a Wi-Fi 6 router, you're talking at least 1,200. So, you can see the difference of what that would make to your experience overall. So, this is where you disconnect in computers. Then you've got environments, which is all the different environments that you can look around. I'm just going to stick to these two because the other ones send me a bit trippy. The games you can launch from here. You can launch Steam VR from down here. And then you can launch your games from inside the Steam VR experience. But the advice is to start off with a game in here, which then when you come out of that game it will take you to the vr experience but it means that everything's running perfectly then you can go to input and that's your controllers that just explains a little bit of details and you can untick and tick some boxes then you can go into settings and this will be your experience of your uh, it's the settings of your headset and you can change things in here this i would advise along with streaming depends completely on what your computer can handle and it's a matter of playing around medium for an rtx 2070 i have a 2080 ti so I, I think i might be able to push it to high but i've not tried that yet but again this one you can just have a play around with videos are where all these screen recordings will get stored they also get stored in your desktop here and again, that's where you really need to make sure, again, your computer is connected through the Ethernet cable and the correct one. And you're in the same room as your router. You're going to get the best experience that way. That is just the best way to do it. If this video was at all helpful to you, please smash the like button, you know, comment, let me know what experience you have. If you've got any questions, let me know and I'll try and answer them. Or someone from this, what seems to be a growing community now, will help out and i do thank anyone who does comment to help me out as well as you know you guys thanks for watching guys and we'll catch you in the next one Goodbye.